right, as promised, this is our part two video with Steve and Judy from Sailing Fair Isle. Now, last week I met up with Steve and Judy and we learned a lot about their background, super interesting background in journalism. Judy had a long time stint as a news anchor in the United Kingdom and Steve has been a long time cameraman. And in fact, they worked together where he would do camera work for her while she was doing the on-air stuff, doing projects in Africa, really fascinating projects. So we talked a lot about their background and this week we are going to do a full tour of their beautiful boat. It's a Hans Christian 48T. Do you mind um, yeah. just describing your boat for us? Okay, she's uh, a Hans Christian 48T. Um, they only made about 28 of these, built in uh, Thailand. Uh, they're, they're built to order. You can have them however you want. I mean, there's lots and lots of teak on this boat. So half a forest on here. You couldn't really make a boat like this nowadays. The teak is too expensive. Uh, and even in those days, you couldn't build it outside, you know, like your boat, the, the Chiloy. You know, it has to be, you know, it's built in Hong Kong where you can get the wood to do all this. Um, and it's, it makes a difference, I think. If you're living on a boat, um, you see, you know, the production boats, plasticky sort of production boats, and they might have sort of wood veneers and things, and they might look good in the in the in the showroom. But you've, you know, when you're cruising, things get bashed around. They do. Know. Think of yesterday, you know, sort of going through that as things flying around. Um, you know, it's going to stay looking good. Wood, you can rub it down. You can varnish it. It's got to be well built. It's got to be strong. Um, you've got to think of that. And I think you know, if you go and buy a, a modern boat, that's one of the things nowadays is that there isn't that quality in the, the woodwork and the craftsmanship inside, as well as the you know the actual construction more importantly outside. The other thing is that um, although it's a relatively big boat, 48 foot, um, we've got loads of storage. So the actual living area is yeah. is quite cute. <laughs> this has got, I mean, it's full keel. So tanks are in the keel. We've got, we yes. can carry almost a uh, uh, thousand liters of water. It's 900 and something liters of water, uh, 650 liters of fuel. So that's all in the keel. So there's no tankage up here. It's all, mm. The weight's all low, uh, storage underneath everything. So, you know, it's, it's worked out well for a boat to live aboard you know that's how these yeah, boats are built you know they're they're meant for that center cockpit i think is a really good idea certainly if you're short-handed and yeah she's cutter rigged which i think by far is the best uh rig for a, for a boat for a cruising boat certainly for a short-handed cruising boat yeah center cockpit means you, you there's not so much motion as well you're in the middle of the boat you, you feel really really safe there the doghouse is is a absolute godsend. It is it? having a hard doghouse. The doghouse comes back far enough that you, you don't get blasted. So describe if you would just kind of from the from the deck any highlights on the deck that you. Okay, well let's start at the beginning. Sure. Go back. Go back. So a nine foot uh, bowsprit. So that's that mean that's good. And if you're going to have uh, a cutter, then the key to that to work it well properly as a cutter. Mm -hmm. Um, is to have enough distance between the staysail and the, and, the, and the jib because you need to be able to to tack one without furling it in every time. So we can. There's, you know, we've got nine foot between both. So yeah, with a boat uh, coming back, then uh, full teak decks. But on boats like this, like yours, I mean, it's, it's it's thick teak. Uh, yeah, lots of teak, um, bronze winches, lots of bronze all around this boat. So there's lots of cleaning there as well of bronze. Yeah, it's not necessarily. You do. If Steve has five minutes to spare, he's up there cleaning the bronze it's, yeah yeah it's bizarre well people with <laughs> you know classic boats every day you're cleaning bronze it's a, it's a it's a mission you know to, in to fact when that. um robin knox johnson went around the world he was yes. the first person to go around the world yes. um single-handed single non-stop non -stop. he had i mean in precious space yes he took 10 bottles, bottles. of brasso yeah so yeah, yeah. To, to clean the bronze. Yeah. So he ran out of drinking water, but the brasso so was, was there. there. <laughs> but yeah, so it's quite a small cockpit, as you see. Um, but you know, it's a big built boat for two people. I mean, that's really, really yeah. what it is. Um, but it's because of that, it's safe. I mean, people get carried away with these huge um, cockpits. So you know, you get swamped by a wave. You're, you, and especially if you've, mm. you're already in a boat that's that's having trouble steering, then you know you, you risk a broach and you know, that sort of stuff. So safe from those points of view. So, yeah. So it's quite good. You do um, feel secure. Mm. I have to say, even with really rocky times, I felt secure just sitting, you know, up at the top there in the doghouse. Yeah. I don't lead the. I mean, against 
not current, well, I suppose most people's wisdom, I think, is to say a safe boat is one that you can do everything from the cockpit. I, I disagree with that completely um, where it comes to a slab reef mainsail. Uh, I wouldn't want a roller reefed mainsail because I don't want all that weight aloft and and because you have got the opportunity to, to get it stuck and get it stuck out and I know yes. several people have actually had to cut the sail, cut it away, you know, there's, there's yeah. no other way around it. Like with anything mechanical, yeah. I mean, that's, that is the Somebody problem, rolls into it a will. mast. Not for me. I mean, although having said that, there are, if I was coastal sailing and doing th stuff with a family, whatever, I might decide that's what I wanted because sometimes the beauty of you know especially you know you hit a button just rolls in a little <laughs> bit you know we went on someone's ML the other day and he single hands a lot and you know one button you know take the take the take the anchor up from the cockpit we'll put the sails out from the cockpit we'll put it on all town yeah. oh, job done off we go um you know this boat yeah. is not like that um uh, but you know you you find a way that works and I can do things really really you know quickly we can do things really really quickly mm. worked out systems where we do that so you know, for the for the the mainsail, I think it's it completely wrong to have that coming back to the cockpit because you've then got to winch from about halfway up. You know, you're you're taking that sail up and mm -hmm. you cannot pull it with the because you're pulling directly outwards. You can't pull anywhere near as much as you can using your weight pulling downwards, and because it's going through all those rollers and whatever, you've got so much friction. You know, you get halfway up and then you're there from grinding yeah. for it to get the bloody thing up. And all the time that's happening, you're going into the wind, the sails flapping around all over the place, and, and you're not in control. You know, it's not a good place to be in. With us, we spin it round, we get we get into wind. I'm at the mast. I can pull it up five seconds, ten seconds at most. And I get within a meter of the top. Yeah, and just the last wind, bit. The last bit, five seconds of, of, of winding. We've got granny bars on here. It's you know I'm safe in that position. I can clip on if necessary. Um, you know, I think it's we up, them, we were off, so and that you know, makes a that, yeah, we've got lots of uh, solar outside. Bifacial panel, one of them, so it's double sided. Gets reflected light. Fantastic on a if you've got something on an arch on a boat because you get all that reflected light off the off the um, the. And the it sea. does. It is. Oh, it's incredible. Yes. I get as much out of that, quite often getting 30 amps out of that, um, and that's about the same as I'm getting out of the two similar sized panels, the standard panels behind it. Yeah. So it's it's amazing. I'm probably going to change those over to bifacial at some point as well. And then the, the stern is interesting because it has, you said, the canoe stern. Which canoe stern, double ender, yeah. yeah. Well, that means, you know, in conditions like the other day with those following seas, we, we don't get any anything that moves you off position. Let's step down into the in the cabin. Well, the galley space is quite generous, um, so we have got a good a good workspace and two sinks behind, which I think is essential. Lots of cupboard space. Um, fridge, so no, it's a big catch. So everything everything is sort of solid. Um, yeah, granite worktops. There's no problem with weight, obviously, in this boat. So you know they, they don't sort of skimp on things. Obviously, opposite the the galley chart table um, we don't carry charts don't use charts not because uh, you know I I don't like them don't do that uh, it's just that there are much better ways of doing that now I mean I spent 30 years sailing with just charts and a sextant I had a you know years ago like 35 years ago we had a radio direction finder would give you a, a line as well um, but that's what we did you know that's how you sailed and uh, so I know the difference of, of doing it and and you know I made the decision that having charts as a backup is is a fallacy you know it's not the right thing to do one because you're not going to buy all those charts certainly if you're sailing around the world you're not going to have it and you're not going to have it in the detail that you want um two because you know even someone like me that spent years you know working with charts you get rusty and if that's your backup what you need the backup when something goes wrong and you're in a bit of a tears you know you want to get things done you're not going to be able to do that quickly because you're out of practice um so you know really the wrong thing to do i think i think the best thing to do is just to have redundancy in the electronic systems you've got so you know we've got the system on the boat obviously with it's got three gps systems in here we're never going to lose uh you know the lightning strike is the only thing that could could take the boat's electrical system out because we've got so many different backup systems to our electrical system here um, but assuming that happens you know we've got three ipads we've got two you know three or four computers three phones all with Navionics on that sort of thing. So there is not yeah. a chance that we will be without some form of electronic um, 
you know way of, of navigating it's, it's not a chance unless you know third world war happens and they knock all their satellites out of the sky in which case you've probably got bigger fit worries on your mind so you know I, I really don't think that's that's an issue so we don't do that so my chart table is is full of uh, sort of bits and bobs it's it's, it's a really great space because it's nice and flat to have all you know mm. screws and tool, tools and you know bits and pieces in this is now sort of just full of bits and bobs but at least you know it's easy access you need places like that because on a boat if it, all those little bits are stored away you never find them you know you just want a screw you need something well you know i think that's a good good use of a chart table so yeah you walk through <laughs> then you do you do the saloon the saloon had a massive table um which so steve made this smaller one with um drop down sides over there we have a big screen television so if we are in port for any length of time we can wire it up and watch on the screen and you can have if we have guests one of them will sleep there and one of them will sleep in the yeah. floor cabin they all yeah uh, they all have lee cloths which come out from yep. underneath and, and clip out uh, into the roof um so yeah that's it's, there's not a lot i mean for a big boat there's not a lot of sleeping room on here no we uh, don't have separate berths it's not it's because not nice for that. because the floor cabin is now steve's edit, edit yeah. room the, we bought the um, boat from someone who is an architect, so he had designed it so the forward cabin wasn't a berth. Mm. Well, it's a one-person berth. You can pull, you can pull it out and make a, a make a bed there, um, and that was perfect for us. Yeah. And the one thing when Steve went round, I think it was it was one of the clinchers, wasn't it? Will my will my big screen fit here? <laughs> yeah, and my when, screen. And when it did. It's made for us, wasn't it? I mean, the boat's made for us, and I think everyone buys a boat with that feeling. At some point, you have to decide that this is my boat. Yeah, it's it's made for me, and I'm made for it. Yeah, <laughs> Judy's was the the stern cabin with the yeah. with a bed that you could actually walk in from both sides. So oh, yeah. you know, quite often you'll find you know yes. a size bed, but normally it's accessed from from one side. So well, someone's got to climb over the other person. So. I was quite. Keen I didn't mind climbing a little bit. <laughs> I was quite keen that we could both get it <laughs> from both sides, so so a stateroom was important to me. Yeah, um, but yeah, and a so separate shower as well. I, I wanted to have a shower that was separate from the um, from the toilet. Yeah. I didn't want to sit on the toilet and have yeah. a shower. Yeah, so different. Yeah, the other things in here: butterfly hatch. So yep. really good, I think. Um, you know, it's, it's still strong. It's you know you, it's safe, but lots of light, lots of air. You can open it up. Yeah, uh, and the height. Outflow. People do comment when they come into the boat. Yeah, well, it's it's, it's got that height. height. So even yeah. tall people, we're not particularly tall. No. Yeah, yeah. There's not many boats that have this this much headroom. So, yeah. yeah it's, and then you have the head here uh, in, in the front. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, with a Blake's toilet. So the Blake's toilet is is a bit of an, an oddity. They're phenomenally expensive. So I'm very glad they were on the boat when, when we bought it. You certainly wouldn't want to pay that sort of money to to buy one. But I mean, I would. I can't. You can't say a bad word about them. If you read people's stories of boats, you'll always get something. Oh, you know, something's gone wrong with the toilet, and this. You know, it yeah. always happens. Heads are just dreadful things on boats. Well, nothing goes wrong with ours. You know, it's 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 just built like a tank it's mm. solid bronze it's set for handles so it's nothing it's not this push push button thing yeah. where you can you know but they're, they're the ones that go wrong you know there's if there's moving parts and things like that you know it's just very difficult this is it's just really properly constructed so I like that you don't the last thing you want is you know is the heads going wrong um, let's see and having two anyway yeah. so having having two I think is important yeah. and again if you have guests Mm -hmm. then yeah you, you can shut that door and then they have their own space yeah and then walking back into the uh, aft cabin yeah just so a quick description so yeah so you go through that that passageway and uh, it's full of junk at the moment but the left hand side is a is a pilot berth and that's got lead cloth in it and then on opposite that doors open so good access to the engine yeah. Uh, it's a Yanmar 110 brake horsepower engine. Again, people, I think the, the previous owner killed it with kindness. You know, he was, um, I mean, he was meticulous. This German, Germans are great. If you're ever buying a boat, buy it off a German because they, they really do do things, you know, Probably, meticulously. Yeah. But I think he had the wrong idea, as many people do, saying you don't want to thrash the engine. Well, that's the last thing you do with a diesel engine anyway. You want to, to give it load, you know. Uh, often, I mean, I, we're, when we're cruising, uh, every hour, I'll you know we cruise at 2,000, 2,200 revs normally. I'll stick it 3,000 revs or above for a while, just to you know, just clear it out. You don't want to glaze the cylinders. You don't want to, with a turbo as well, have it sit up. And that's what happened to this. It was seized. It was just sitted up, and the, the exhaust elbow as well. So uh, yeah, I had to get that rebuilt and uh, all changed. But it's it's great engine. Yamaha engines, I think, are the best. 
engines around. I, I love them. And then moving on back, do you have the, is it a queen size bed or? Yeah, it's a queen size bed. Um, and it's, yeah, it's properly shaped so it fits normal, you know, sheets and all that sort of stuff as well. Lots of storage underneath it. And then another uh, head in there with a stand up shower. Um, so yeah, that's nice. And it's, it's a good room because it's got, you know, it's a couple of portholes, big hatch, a couple of uh, derades as well. I mean, yes. they build boats without derades now. I mean, that's just stupid. So you have a sense of space, which I think was important for me. I mean, as in we have lots of storage, so it's not a big space, but it is, it's up as well. So you don't feel like you're enclosed in a boat. Because that was the thing that I did, I did feel that perhaps um, I would suffer from claustrophobia of some form when you're, when you're out and about and you can't get out. Um, but in fact, this space has been okay for that. So that's, that was important. Yeah, a little beautiful boat. Uh, thanks for the tour and for the insight into your, your own backgrounds. Uh, any parting words for you know, viewers about the cruising lifestyle, uh, people who are interested in getting into this? Uh... Yeah, well, I think just, yeah, you've got, you've got to do it. I mean, um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's one of those things. It, so many people plan something like this and you, you've got to, yeah, just grasp the nettle and, and, and do it. And, you know, people that say, well, you know, you, you've got, and I suppose it's easy for me because I have learned sailed all my life and, and learned to sell lots of different things, but you hear so many stories of people that haven't sailed and they're, you know, maybe in their, you know, middle age to, you know, up or older and they haven't done it, but you know, it is possible to do it. Um, sail with other yeah, people, you can get, learn get the experience from other people. I would do that rather than courses necessarily. I mean, courses, yeah, they've got their place, but um, yeah, I've heard so many bad experiences of people not being taught very well and it not being a pleasant experience either. So I think actually, you know, sailing with the right people, getting experience sailing with friends um, is a very good way of, of learning um, and, and, and doing that in a way that you actually then want to do it and aren't put off doing it. So, um, or just yeah. jump like I did. That's yeah. the other thing. Well, make, sure, make sure you're, you're sailing with something. You're that that, but you had sailed with me a few times over the years. And, but I was very careful. When I took Judy sailing, <laughs> I was not going to take her to the east coast of England and sail in a, in a you know, full sail in the winter. Because, you know, that's, that's going to be the end of that if you do that. Although, actually, with Judy, I think she probably would have been fine. Um, but, you know, we were, like, we used to work. Sometimes we had a couple of jobs in the Caribbean doing things. And we, and we would sail there. We'd hire a boat and go out sailing. And, and we got invited to a thing called the Interline Regatta in the British Virgin Islands to crew. Yeah. So Judy came for that. Well, you know, if you, if you do those sorts of things, if you want your other half, and that's normally the case. We get more questions about anything else, I think, uh, with people saying, how do I persuade my wife? To do this you know you've you you seem like you know you you're both loving it how do how do i get yeah. to do that and i think it's yeah go to the right places go to the right places take it slow take it easy um and you could do don't it you go know in the crazy weather don't go in the crazy weather no um, not to begin with in fact we've got we've got friends again talking about england and um her father was a very strong sailor and so as a child she would always have to get the oilies on go down has miserable weekends on on a rain soaked coast of england yeah. On a boat so will she go near a boat now you're joking <laughs> not a chance no. so yes i think it is that, 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 that what you're saying is true um and then make sure what i did when we bought fair isle is i made sure that when we were looking at boats i sat on a boat steve went away and i just sat on my own for a couple of hours um really it takes that long just say could i live here um and then with fair isle the answer was absolutely yes and it didn't look like this because it had been, you yeah. know, decommissioned for like two years. So the you know, sails were all down here and all the rest of it. So it was, but it had that feel. And, and yeah, I, that's the only way I can describe it. I felt I could live here. Fantastic. Well, thanks for your time. All right. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. Meeting you both this week. <laughs> yeah, right. and you. All right. Thanks everyone for watching. Thanks to Steve and Judy again from Sailing Fair Isle. I'll link their channel below and we'll see you next week.